Um, I think with Norman, if he actually does leave, I think that betters Mitch Moses' year because he then he becomes the dominant half. It's, yeah, those two as a combination just don't... They just don't work. They're they kind of quit. too similar. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like, they're both talented enough that it worked and it worked in 2017, but long-term, that's not the halves solution that the Eels are obviously going to want to run with. Uh, on yeah. to our next bit of news. If my hotkeys work, there we go. Corey Norman to the Dragons. Now, it's not official yet. Reportedly, there's about $20,000 holding up this deal from going through. Um Norman says, I want an extra 20K paid out. The Eels say, no, this is what we're going to pay you out for. Nothing more, nothing less, or maybe something less, but nothing more. And um, Norman's not budging on his things, uh, on his stance. So he trained with the Eels today, I believe, and, and he's set to continue training with them this week. But the three-year deal is there for the Dragons. They're just ironing out the creases. Now, I thought at first this was for 2020, but if this is for 2019, is that a good or a bad signing to you? It's a hard one because I think Corey Norman, obviously, like we just said before, he's, he's a good talent, but uh, him working with team, like I don't know if he works with the Dragons. Um, obviously, he's going to, I think I saw that he's going to play 5'8 and they're going to move Widdit to fullback. So I guess that's an improvement over Dufty. Yeah. But, where, um, where does Dufty yeah. go for you? Does he go to the wing or to reserve grade? Oh, I think he goes to reserve grade. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, there was also the rumor that they were uh, going to sign Robert Jennings, and I, I think that sort of died down a little bit since the Norman um, talks are, uh, came up, obviously. But in in terms of wingers at the club right now, Jordan Pereira and Jonas Pearson are probably their two best, I would say. Yeah, I'd say they're definitely going to get the job. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean D- Dufty's best attributes and skills don't really correlate to the wing. They're more of a, yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking. you know, a bit of open space play, and, and that's when Dufty's most effective. So, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying there. Our next bit of news for the week: Tarek Sims re-signs a three-year deal uh, with the Saint George Illawarra Dragons. Now, I, I was talking to one of my friends, DK, and we were doing a, a few graphic designs for um, top fives, and, and we actually, I believe, we put Sims at number one. Would you agree he's the best second row in the game based off his 2018 form? I don't know if I'd say he's the best. Um, he was pretty good in the second row, but with Tarek Sims, for everything he does good, he also does a lot of dumb shit as well. Like, he has a lot of errors. Like, yeah. if you look at the state of origin, um, as soon as he came on, I'm pretty sure he did a high attack. I can't remember exactly what he did, but uh, yep, I, I remember he did, a, he did a big error straight away. Yep. So, well, you've got to take the good with the bad with him. But Yeah, he's yeah. the sort of player that plays with that much aggression. It's how he channels it and, and, and if he can channel it like successfully throughout a game. And, and like you say, the, the times when he doesn't, it's um it, it's pretty noticeable. Also, I think even at his own club, I think Frizzell's a better second row. So yeah, you could I definitely... I think Frizzell's really good. Yeah, you could definitely make that argument. And I think that's also justified by the fact Frizzell's in the Australian side, whereas Sims wasn't. So you definitely do have a pretty good point there. Our next Before we move on to the next one, um, yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see... Tarek and Corbin line up together. I don't yeah. think they've ever. I don't think they've played together. I know, no, Ash, I know Ashton and Tarek have played, yeah, but yep. Um, maybe yeah, they played cool. a couple rounds at the Knights, and then that was obviously oh, yeah, when true. the Knights yeah, were in true. their real negative stage. And I think Tarek moved on, so they didn't actually play that much together. But with Lisa and Armel leaving the club, let's be honest, uh, Corbin Sims was probably the best replacement you could get for a bench impact forward, right? Yeah, and I wouldn't imagine he'd be on huge money, so yeah. probably a good value for the player. Yeah. All right, our, our next bit of news was Lachlan Maranta is back in the NRL, the former Brisbane Broncos winger. Um, he, he signed a one-year, sort of a lifeline deal, I would almost say, with the Dragons. I, I believe he was a little bit out of favour with the Queensland Reds in Super Rugby. Uh, did he ever get a go with them? Like, did he even actually play? I don't watch much Super Rugby, man, so I, I couldn't so, give you an I've... honest answer, but... I feel like I saw that he wasn't even playing for them. Yeah, that that could be true. I mean, and if it is, I think that almost. I mean, they do need wingers at the club, but do, would you have signed Lachlan Moranta if you were in there? I shoes? mean, he's he's got NRL experience, I guess, but I mean, he really is only a depth signing. If you've seen a, a lot of NRL players, they go over and they just jump straight into like the Wallabies team. And if this guy can't even get into like the Reds team. Yeah, and, you're right. Know, yeah, uh, I've always said that. We see a lot of our outside backs transition to rugby, and it it seems so seamless. But 
we never see any rugby players transition to NRL. I don't know if it's a money thing or... Oh, yeah, it probably is. I suppose for them, they can... If they're chasing money, they don't need to jump codes. They can just go to France or something. Yeah, or that's true. go to Japan, stuff like that. 